This is the Louis T. Network. In the lab room. Ten minutes or less. Buffalo Bills. Welcome, you are in the lab room. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the program, 10 Minutes or Less, Buffalo Bills. Clock, please. Here we go. So, Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Season Rewind. You look at this Bills football team, new head coach, new system, new scheme, new quarterback. Everything's fresh and new in Buffalo in 2013. And when it's fresh, when it's new, when it's young, when it's vibrant, it's also very mistake prone. And looking at this team, you, you, you come close in the season opener against New England, but you lose. You go the very next week and you get the dramatic win, first of the career for EJ Manuel. Yeah, they win the game. It feels really different in Buffalo at that time. But then you go on the road to New York and lose to the Jets, really lay an egg in that game. But then you come back home and you beat the Super Bowl defending champion Baltimore Ravens at home. And all of a sudden, maybe the Buffalo Bills had a little something. You go back on the road Thursday night football against the Cleveland Browns in a game that you probably win if EJ Manuel doesn't get injured. But he does changes the fortunes of your season, you proceed to lose that game and then lose the next four out of six, landing you at four and seven at your bye week. So you come off the bye, you win two out of your final five games, which lands you at six and 10 for the 2013 campaign. You look at this Bills team and how they got to six and 10, sporadic play at the quarterback position. Injury riddled season for EJ Manuel. You really don't know what you have in EJ Manuel because he wasn't able to stay healthy on the season. The running game was still effective. The offensive line did a solid job. You could use an upgrade at the tight end position. Your receivers in and out of the lineup. A lot of injuries for this Buffalo Bills football team. When they were healthy, they were dangerous. When they were banged up, they were a vulnerable football team. So you look at this defensive unit for the Bills. They're going to miss their defensive coordinator, Mike Pettin, who's moved on to Cleveland as the head coach there. And so Jim Schwartz comes in. You're hoping he keeps a lot of the same things going because you were second in the league in sacks with 57. I mean, you got after the quarterback. Your defensive line and the guys that you have in your rotation, it looked like an all-star cast of guys getting to the quarterback. When you look at the numbers, it's almost cartoonish the numbers that your guys were putting up along that defensive line. And so you want to continue to get after the quarterback and continue to put pressure on opposing quarterbacks so you can continue to force the amount of turnovers that you did in 2013 moving forward. So now we fast forward to the 2014 offseason and you look at the free agents for the Buffalo Bills. Bills don't have a lot of free agents that they have to have back. They don't have a lot of guys that are up in terms of contracts. So you look at the free agent list and it's really, it's really a slim list. Scott Chandler, Thomas Welch, Alex Carrington, Arthur Motes, Jarius Bird, Jim Leonard, Dan Carpenter, and you have two restricted free agents in Frank Summers and Chris Hogan. So you, you look at the Bills and their free agents and of course, there's an elephant in the room there's a guy that you want back, okay? And all of the Bill players that I think should be back, that you should want to have back, are in red. You, you look at this list, Scott Chandler, let's start there. We'll, we'll tackle the elephant in the room in a second. Let's start with Scott Chandler, your tight end. I like Scott Chandler. I think he has some really solid hands. He's very dependable. Big target, especially when you're in the red zone. Not going to run away from anybody. Not going to create a lot of separation. But if you throw him the football... Most times, often than not, he's going to catch it. I like him. I think you should bring him back, but you need a compliment to him. You need a guy that's a pass-catching threat that's going to spread the field out. It's going to really be a mismatch 
nightmare for teams. You need a guy that's athletically gifted at the tight end position to go along with Scott Chandler. I think you bring Chandler back and look to add someone else in free agency. We'll talk about that in a second. You look at another person that you should bring back. I think that you should bring back Dan Carpenter. It came into the Bills organization as a late ad. You drafted a kicker. It really didn't work out the way he got injured. Carpenter comes on. He's 33 of 36. And, I mean, he, he lit it up. He, he did his job, and he did it to the umpteenth degree. I feel like he's done enough to warrant another chance in Buffalo. I think you need to give him another shot to win that job. I know you drafted a kicker last year out of Florida State, and you want that guy to be your new kicker. But if he doesn't win the job in camp, and I feel like you need to bring Carpenter back and allow him to compete for that job, he earned the right to have a shot back in Buffalo, give him a chance to see if he can win that job right out. You look at another guy that I feel like you should bring back, Frank Summers. Why not bring back Frank Summers? He's a big, burly fullback that can open up holes. I thought he did a good job in the run game and also was a guy that you could throw it to out of the backfield, had a touchdown receiving. He's always a guy that you can rely on, if need be, to hand him the football as well. Like Frank Summers, I don't mind seeing him back in the Buffalo Bills uniform you look at another guy that I think you should bring back and of course here's the elephant in the room Jarius Bird now look what do you do when love doesn't love you okay when the bird wants to fly sometimes you just gotta say bye and you can't franchise this guy again it, 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 you don't want this thing to turn ugly. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants a situation where guys don't want to be there. So if the bird wants to fly the coop, you got to let him go, okay? If the bird wants to fly, you got to say bye. And so you want Jarius Bird back. But if he doesn't want to be back, and if the number that he's asking for is astronomical, keep in mind, Bill's working with a little bit over $18 million worth of cap space. So they got some money to play with. They got some guys they need to sign back. They're going to be targeting some guys in free agency. And they got to sign their draft pick. So you don't want to put too many eggs in one basket. If you're the Buffalo Bills and Jarius Bird's number is way too high, which it's going to be, I think you just got to let that guy fly away. Let the bird fly away. And so that takes us to team needs. And so you look at the Bills and their team needs. And you start with that very position at safety. If Jarius Bird doesn't come back, I think you need to attack the safety position in free agency and, and get a guy in there and get someone that's not going to cost you a lot of money, but also come in and pick up where Jarius Bird left off. Again, Jarius Bird is a playmaker. There's no other way to say it. The guy makes plays. He has a nose for the football. He missed five games last year, still ended up with four interceptions. He has a nose for the football. You need a guy that's going to find himself in positions to make plays and be around the football, a la Jarius Bird. Why not target a guy like Stevie Brown from the New York Giants? Why not target a guy like Jenkins from the New Orleans Saints? These are targets that are out there that you can go and approach it won't cost you as much as a Jarius Bird. And I think they can come in with the pressure that you're getting up front with your front seven, especially that defensive line with that front four. With the amount of pressure that you're applying, stick a Stevie Brown back there and see what he can bring to this defense. He was a guy that picked off a lot of passes two years ago. He has a nose for the football. I think he can fit in this system. Go attack free agency at the safety position and leave the tight end position, and I also think you need help at outside linebacker, leave that to the draft. I don't like what tight ends are out there in free agency. However, if you do bring back Scott Chandler, I feel like if you go out and get a guy like, say, Ed Dixon from Baltimore, maybe you've got enough there. You don't need to go attack that in the draft. If you go out and you bring back Scott Chandler, on the cheap, and you go out and get a guy like Ed Dixon, I think you're perfectly fine at the tight end position. Now, you look at outside linebacker, I, I, I love, absolutely love Kiko Alonso. You know how I feel about Kiko Alonso. Kiko Alonso is everywhere. Now, you look on the other side, and I was actually pleasantly surprised 
with what you got out of Manny Lawson. I thought Manny Lawson actually played well last year. Got you four sacks, picked off a pass. Manny Lawson actually played well. Now on the other side, Nigel Bradham, I'm not really in love with that guy. Think you can upgrade that outside linebacker position over there and really make your front seven a force to be reckoned with. And so I think you need to go in the draft and attack that area. And, and I think you'll be fine if you're the uh, Buffalo Bills. I feel like you've got a lot going for you. and just want to see what this new defensive coordinator is going to do with this defense because that's where you're going to win and you need more consistent play from your quarterback position. Of course, you hear the buzzer. You see the time. My time is up. That's been the Buffalo Bills in 10 minutes or less. 10 minutes or less. Like the content? Want more? Sub up. In the lab room.